The Red Sox are currently making a whole lot of waves in the Garrett Crochet market. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Sea Radio. My name is Corbin, and I know, I know we just did a video on crochet to the Red Sox, but I gave you guys the option for what you wanted to talk about today, and overwhelmingly, you wanted to talk about the new and exciting news that's coming out about the Red Sox connection to Garrett Crochet, so that's exactly what we're going to do in today's video, but before we get into that, you may notice I look absolutely ridiculous, and that's because right now we are raising money for Movember, a foundation dedicated to men's mental and physical health, both here in the U.S. and nationally around the globe. We are currently at $750 raised. We're trying to get to $1,500, so if you want to help us get there, possibly win some prizes as well, make sure you guys click the link in the description or the comment section down below. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. Okay, so like I said, we already made a video going over basically the pros and cons of the Red Sox going after a Garrett Crochet, so we're not going to do that in today's video. Instead, we're going to be focusing on all the latest news slash reports that have come out about the Red Sox involvement in this. The first one I wanted to start with was just simply sort of an overarching theme seen amongst national analysts, and that is that basically every single one of them is putting the Red Sox into this sort of competition for Garrett Crochet services. I'm talking MLB tonight. I'm talking guys connected to The Athletic. I'm talking guys connected to ESPN. Everyone is saying, hey, dummies, the Red Sox are looking to be connected to Garrett Crochet. And honestly, I'm not putting a ton of stock into this. The reason for that is because I don't know if it's coming from a place of inside information or if it's just simply the Red Sox are a good match with this team. They should be in on this guy, right? I'm not going to put too much into it. However, what I am going to put some stock into is a conversation that local beat reporter Sean McAdam had with a personnel within the White Sox organization because this one, this one gets me a pretty decent amount excited. The quote, the first quote I want to bring up here is this one. I think they're right in the thick of things. It'll come down to what they are willing to offer, but from a talent standpoint, they match up well. They didn't show much interest at the deadline, but the interest has increased in the offseason and they're sending the message, we want to be involved in this. We want to be involved in these talks. That's actually kind of big news, right? We have been hearing about the Red Sox wanting to be aggressive and trying to utilize some of the assets they really haven't utilized in a pretty decent amount of time to go out and improve this major league roster. To have somebody from inside the White Sox kind of confirm that, kind of say, yeah, they've been telling you they're going to be aggressive. Right now, they're being pretty aggressive with the idea of trading for Garrett Crochet. They are at least, at the bare minimum, wanting to be involved in these conversations. Now, I know... A lot of people are going to sit there and they're going to say, Corbin, why are we going over just more random words from a random somebody within a random organization, right? We want action. And I agree with you. I want the Red Sox to take action, but there's something else that really puts me into this conversation of, man, the Red Sox may actually be trying to do this thing. Not only did this guy say, yeah, they're right in the middle of this. They, The White Sox actually think they're so far in the middle of this. They're having scouts go over and look at Red Sox players. In fact, in this article as well, they said that the White Sox actually pulled one of their scouts off their normal assignment to fully focus on the Red Sox minor league system. To me, that is definitive proof that the White Sox, at the bare minimum, expect the Red Sox to be big players for Garrett Crochet, and that's the part, in my opinion, that really stands out in this article. It's not so much of a, yeah, maybe they're going to be involved. It's not so much of a, yeah, the fit makes sense, so we're going to put them on this short list of potential teams that make sense. No, the White Sox are expecting or understand that the Red Sox are so involved that they spent the last month of the season not looking at their prospects looking at the Red Sox prospects, which to me absolutely indicates that not only are the Red Sox planning on being involved here, the White Sox are very interested in what the Red Sox have to offer. It's starting to feel like if it wasn't a perfect fit before that it's becoming a perfect fit now. 
But that's not the only thing to come out of this article by Sean McAdam. The other thing they came out was what this package could possibly look like. And there's a couple of things I want to point out in this as well. The first one is that the Red Sox are flat out at this point saying Roman Anthony's off the table, which is fantastic. If the Red Sox trade Roman Anthony for Garrett Crochet, I would have thrown a fit. That would have been so, so, so dumb. It also mentioned that at least one of the other big four is untouchable. They didn't mention who that is. I would venture to guess it's Christian Campbell. If it isn't, I would guess it's Marcelo Meyer, which would be a really interesting choice. But going into that sort of conspiracy type stuff isn't exactly what we're doing here in today's video. We're talking about strictly this stuff in this article. The other thing I really wanted to point out is that the White Sox actually have some interest in players outside of the big four, which should be music to the Red Sox ears. Specifically, this article mentioned guys like you know, Stinson Garcia and Mikey Romero as players of interest, but I think that's just a testament to how good this Red Sox position player pool is getting, right? You're starting to have conversations about guys not in your top five or sometimes not even in your top 10 being centerpieces for a really impactful trade that is absolutely impressive where the Red Sox are at right now. And to be honest with you, like we talked about in the earlier video this week about Garrett Crochet, one of the big things I mentioned is that if they can get this deal done without having to utilize one of their big four prospects or really even their big five or six or whatever, if they could stay away from the top names in this organization and get this deal done, you're talking about the potential for a really massive win for the Boston Red Sox. So the fact that the White Sox are out here saying, yeah, those big four are great, but hey, we really wouldn't hate any of your other middle tier type players or second tier type players either. Those guys look pretty good too. Feels absolutely fantastic to me. But then the question becomes, if a, one of the big four or top five, six guys aren't going to be the headlining of this trade, who could it possibly be? Well, the answer goes back to someone we've been talking about trading this entire offseason, Mr. Willier Abreu. That same insider that talked about the Red Sox interest in Garrett Crochet also talked about the White Sox interest in Willie Abreu, saying, quote, young position players are probably going to be the number one focus. And from there, if it can include an arm, someone like Cutter Crawford, great. But even if the service time clock has started, they'd be open to it. They're going to be open to whatever gives them the best return value-wise rather than time frame or fit. To me, this is incredibly interesting because it, the overall thought process within the or within baseball in general was that the White Sox weren't really looking for guys that are going to be free agents in five or six years. The thought was that they were looking for guys who have a couple of years to get to the major leagues who have a really high ceiling and then from there have six-ish years of control, right? It's fascinating to me that the White Sox are sort of like, look, we just want the best package possible. We're not looking for a specific time frame here on any of these players and I, does that make sense to me probably not right but hey if the White Sox are willing to do it I'm absolutely willing to do it as well if I'm the GM of the Red Sox because this is a really fascinating development with with where the Red Sox stand in this trade it also kind of sounds like the White Sox are fully open to the idea of will you or you being the headline for this deal in fact Sean McAdam asked that exact question and the answer was yeah I think so I think he could there's a lot of value there, especially when you factor in the five years of control. Now, again, we don't really need to go into the fit of Garrett Crochet on this team. We've already done that just a couple of days ago. If you want to watch that video, click the link popping up on the screen right now. But what I want to say is if the Red Sox can trade Will You Abreu and land a Garrett Crochet, I think you absolutely have to jump on that idea. Even if you do have to include a Cutter Crawford in that deal, maybe it is just Cutter and Will you straight up for Garrett Crochet. I think that's a lot to ask of the Red Sox to give up, but at the same time too you are able to replace those guys on this current roster whether it be with the number one prospect in baseball in Roman Anthony or maybe you bring in a Teoscar Hernandez and utilize him for a little bit in the outfield before you bring Masataki Yoshida maybe at the deadline you trade him and then bring Roman Anthony up you've got options to replace Willier on this team he's a fantastic player he's a great player he could be a good player for a very long time but with where the Red Sox are at right now I think it makes a lot 
lot of sense to trade him. And if he can get Garrett Crochet, I think you're in a really good place. Even if they don't want to trade Cutter, I think you could still make a deal with Will you're headlining this that still meets the White Sox requirements without decimating the Red Sox farm system. You could do something like Will you Abreu, Franklin Arias, and Miguel Blaze. Those are two high lottery type prospects for sure. And the Red Sox are going to miss him in the farm system. But you've got Braden Montgomery that just got drafted. He's going to be integrated into this farm system ranking at some point, even though he already is. You're going to have Yoel and Cespedes, who's in a very similar bold as Franklin Arias, right? You have options to replace those guys. The fact that the White Sox are willing to not only go for these sort of second tier Red Sox prospects, but also open to trading major league talent should absolutely get you excited if you are a Garrett Crochet truther to this team, because it sounds like it's going to make a Red Sox trade for Garrett Crochet much more realistic. And honestly, I'm a little bit excited about that, right? This is sort of the first time this offseason that they have been essentially firmly planted in conversations with somebody. We've heard reports of conversations possibly taking place, but this is the first time they could definitively say, yeah, the Red Sox are involved in this thing and they're not just on the sidelines. They're smack dab in the middle of it. And that is unbelievably exciting. So I'm excited about this. I really love the idea of the Red Sox going after Crochet. If it doesn't involve a top four prospect in the Sox system, if they could do that, I think this would be a really smart move. Crochet has such a high caliber ceiling. Again, we've already talked about it, so I'm trying not to dive into it and give you guys repeat information, but man, this is something that I think you absolutely needed to know because this could totally shape the Red Sox offseason, but that's just my opinion. So let me know in the comment section down below what do you guys think? What do you think about the idea of the Red Sox trading for Crochet? What do you think about this news? In your mind, does it make it more or less likely? And if the Red Sox could center a trade around William Rebreu and Garrett Crochet, would you do that? And if not, why? Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. It just simply helps these videos out a ton. And it's the best way to let me know you're enjoying the content. Don't forget, Movember's still going on. Links are in the description in the comments. And if you want to listen instead of watch these episodes, all you got to do is head over to your favorite podcasting app and look up Red Seat Radio. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one, and I will see you maybe with a big trade and, of course, in the Red Seats.